Is what? Is a personality without a what? A body. Mm -hmm. For a spirit to manifest, what would happen? It will need to possess a body. Are you there? And the first spirit I'm trying to explain is what? The spirit of the Lord. It is this spirit that will empower you to have dominion over sin. Because the spirit of the Lord is the spirit of authority. Are you there? Are you there? So it is with that authority that you can say no. Are you getting what I'm saying now? It's that authority that gives you dominion over what? Sin. So and I said, the spirit of the Lord is a teaching spirit. Meaning that if God cannot teach you, he cannot instruct you. How God instructs us is by teaching us. God instructs his children through his teachings. God instructs his children through his teachings. So if his teachings are not coming to you, his instructions will not flow to you. Instructs me, oh God. What you are saying is teach me, oh God. Because until he teaches, instructions will not come. And I say that what made Jesus a good mentor to his disciples was because uh -huh, the spirit of the law is in him. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of the Lord is what makes you qualified to be a leader. Are you there? To be a what? A leader. One that can give instruction in righteousness. That's what the spirit of the Lord can help you to do. Are you getting what I'm saying? See, let me show you something. All the seven spirits of God are secrets. So another way to see them is, instead of seven spirits of the Lord, we can say seven secrets of the Lord. Seven secrets of God, sorry. Are you getting what I'm saying? Instead of seven spirits of God, you can say what? Seven secrets of God. So the first secret of God is the spirit of the Lord. That's why God can be a father. Because there's a way God lords over his people without killing their will. Are you getting what I'm saying? There's a way God does what? Lords over his people without what? Killing their will. One thing the devil does when he possesses a vessel is that as, as he tries to lord, he kills your will. So you can't say no. That's one of the difference between a person that is possessed by a devil and one that has the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will bring instructions in form of advice. You can still say no or yes. Are you there? But when a strange spirit possesses a body, it kills your will. You can't say no. You can't stop doing it. Are 
Are you getting what I'm saying? So the first secret of God is what? The spirit of the Lord. So, and that's what makes God a Lord. You don't become a Lord until you have what? The spirit of the Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at this. When we say, accept Jesus Christ as your personal what? Lord and Savior. The arrangement is not correct. Do you get what I'm saying? Yes. He's not Lord before Savior. He's Savior before Lord. Because until He saves you, He cannot Lord over you. So, God saves us to Lord over us. God saves us to instruct us. But that Lordship is by your own will. You can choose to say no. Are you there? Because in the Lordship of God, He will not kill your will. Your will will still be empowered. So you can say no and you can say yes, Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, what's the difference between the man that has accepted Jesus as his Savior and the one that has accepted Jesus as his Lord? What's the difference? Hmm? The one that has accepted Jesus as his Savior is saved so he can boast of salvation. Are you there? But the one that has accepted Jesus as his Lord is under the government of the Holy Spirit. There are many things he can do that he will not do until God speaks. That's the one that has accepted Jesus as what? As Lord. Until you come to that point where Jesus defines what you do and what you don't do, you have not accepted him as your Lord. Are you getting what I'm saying now? All right. Let's move to number two. What's number two? Now, the first secret of God is what? The spirit of... The... Meanwhile, all these seven spirits, you can find them in God. Am I right? Am I right? And you can also find them in the children of what? Of God. See, the seven spirits of God is, a, is... You know, you can also put it in another form. You can say the seven DNAs of God. Are you there? The seven DNAs of God, the seven genes of God. When you give birth, your child should carry your gene. Are you there? So what we look for in a person's life to know if he or she is truly saved is what? The DNAs of God. The seven genes of God. You may not have all at once, but we must be able to see one, two, three. Are you there? So number three is what? The spirit. Huh? The spirit of wisdom. Praise the Lord. Wisdom is the second secret of God. God is not wise. He is wisdom. Are you there? There's no between I am wise and I am wisdom. It's not the same thing. Are you there? If you say I am wise, what you are saying is I what? I have benefited from wisdom. I'm a beneficiary of wisdom. But when I say I am wisdom, meaning that what? All about you is what? Is wisdom. So Jesus, God is what? Wisdom. What is wisdom? Wisdom is the right application of what you know. Are you there? Wisdom is the right application of knowledge. If you have knowledge and you lack wisdom, you will not be able to apply the knowledge rightly. Are you getting what I'm saying? For instance, I want to cook rice. Okay, I want to cook jollof rice. By knowledge, I know that I need to get in tomato. Help me. Time. Pepper. Onion. Okay. You are giving me simple ones. The granite oil. Are you there? Korean time. Korean time. Thank you. Rice. So that you don't be doing pepper soup without rice, right? <laughs> Praise God. 
Now, but by wisdom, I will know the amount of salt to hand. The amount of time, the, the, the quantity of time to have. Are you there? The quantity of pepper to have. So, wisdom helps you to what? To apply. Wisdom gives you application. You cannot apply the knowledge you have if you lack wisdom. Are you there? Knowledge is in knowing. Are you there? Wisdom is in application. Are you getting what I'm saying? So when you see a child of God that knows so much, how many of you have found people like that around you? They know so much. They know mysteries. They can say deep things, but they can't apply it. You change their life. They are not doing what they are saying. Eh? Knowledge is there, but what? They lack wisdom. That's the, that, that means the spirit of wisdom is missing. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you can take a Christian's life and know what is missing. And unfortunately, that's what we have today. That's very common. Many people can say many deep things. And yet they are not living it. Are you there? Holiness is this. They are starting this, 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 this. They are this. But if you change their life, they are not living what they are saying. What? What is missing? The spirit of what? Knowledge fills your head. Are you there? Huh? Wisdom controls your actions. It's not the same. Knowledge fills your mind. Wisdom controls your actions. It's not the same. Knowledge is in knowing. Wisdom is in doing. They are not the same thing. Knowledge is in what? It's in knowing. Wisdom is in doing. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of what? Of wisdom. So my question to you is, how many of those things you know you can apply? How many of them? I know you know so much, you have listened to several. <laughs> but can you apply those things you have learned? If no, what do you lack? The spirit of wisdom. As a student, it takes wisdom to apply formula and get the right answer. Are you there? Knowledge tells you the formula. Okay, now let me give you an example. How many of us, we have, we, have, we have had this experience before? You are dealing with a calculatory question. When you start the question, you know the formula. But how to now arrive at the answer became a problem. Has it happened to you before? The reason is because what? Wisdom is what? Is it clear? All right. What's number three? The spirit of what? The spirit of understanding. Praise God. Now look at, let me give us an illustration that will, that will be able to capture um, knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. For instance, do you know that I hear you it's not the same thing as I understand you. Do you believe that? I hear you is not what? It's not the same thing as what? I understand. Now, if I if I speak with you with an with, with another language now, what will you do? You will hear. But the message I'm passing across, do you understand? It means that understanding is a deeper stage of hearing. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying now? Understanding is what? Now, listen to this. Listen to this. Let me give you the key to understanding. Now, the Lord taught me this many years ago. What is understanding? 
Understanding is a product of continuous learning. Understanding is what? Is a product of continuous what? Learning. With an open heart. Anyway. When you continue to learn with a heart that is ready and you are not tired, there's a destination you are going into. And that place is called what? Understanding. You keep learning with an open heart, with a heart that is ready. You keep learning. You are not tired. You keep hearing. I can assure you, I know where you are going. And that place is called what? Understand. The spirit of understanding. Many people read, but they don't even do what? They don't understand. It will mean that understanding is beyond just reading. Am I right? It's beyond just reading. Are you there? Now, let me give you an example. Do you know there's a way people can behave? And from their behavior, you know what their intentions are. Do you believe that? It takes understanding to discern. Are you there? It takes understanding to discern the move of God. If you don't understand God, you cannot discern His moves. Are you there? So, men that will discern the move of God in a season, who knows what God is doing part-time, they are those that have the spirit of what? Of understanding. What was so special about the sons of Issachar? They had what? Understanding. Meanwhile, the foundation for understanding is knowledge. You need to know first before you understand. You cannot understand without knowing. You are like a building. You are building. You are, you are putting the first blocks. You can't understand without what? Knowing. So, hello, look at me. You see, understanding, wisdom, are you there? They are like a destination. If you start your journey from knowledge, Where are you going to? Huh? Huh? Ah, this is another big question now. If you start your journey from knowledge, where are you going to? Okay, okay. Hmm. Some people are saying wisdom, some people are saying understanding. You will both it with a point. And if your point is genuine, don't worry, we will take it. If you start from, from knowledge, where are you going? Understanding. After understanding, you reach. Okay. I know people have contrary opinion. You have contrary opinion. Raise your hand. All right. So if you start your journey from knowledge, where are you going? No, don't implicate to you. Stand on your don't do according to what you say. Please. Yes? Understanding is a product of continuous learning. Understanding is a product of continuous learning. So if I learn something now, through knowledge. Uh-huh. If you learn something now, you have knowledge. I have knowledge. And I apply that knowledge. And I continue to learn and apply. Learn and apply. Can, Can you apply without un- having understanding? <laughs> <laughs> Can you see that? You can't apply when you lack understanding. You, that means you are applying now. <laughs> are you there? <laughs> if you start from knowledge, you will get to understand. And from understanding, you will enter into wisdom. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because wisdom deals with application. And you cannot apply what you don't understand. 
For you to be able to apply something and it works, it means you have an understanding of that thing. Meanwhile, it's possible to jump from knowledge to wisdom. But there will be lapses. In that case, you will try to apply, but it will not work. Produce what the required result because you have jumped a step. Are you get what I'm saying now? Are you get what I'm saying? Have you heard some people say things like, uh, "I'm hungry, but I don't know what I want to eat." I know I'm hungry, but me tell most people, "Have you heard people like that before?" Let's go. Let's trust the Lord that before this teaching is wrapped up, I want to get, I want to use an illustration to, to, to explain knowledge, understanding, and wisdom. Do you understand? So where are we now? Where are we? The spirit of understanding. And I told you, understanding is a product of what? Continuous learning. Understanding brings a standard to your standing. I'm standing for the Lord. I'm waiting upon the Lord. Do you have a standard? The standard in your standing is understanding. That's what. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Many people seem to be waiting on the Lord. But there's no standard. Or maybe you check what they are doing. They are not different from the world. Why? There's, they lack understanding. If you try to wait on God without understanding, your waiting will lack standard. Meanwhile, the Bible says the standard of the law, standard what? Uh-huh. Let those that name the name of the law depart from what? Uh-huh. Understanding brings a, sta- a standard to your standing. You don't just stand anyhow. You stand where? That is law. Are you getting what I'm saying? The spirit of what? Understanding. Do you know the problem we have? Most of the time when we go to a place of learning, what we acquire most times is knowledge. Even most institutions you see things like knowledge is... Are you there? A a teacher in parks, it's not enough. That's not enough. A teacher in, in past knowledge, but a great teacher does not only impart knowledge, they bring you into what? Understanding, and from there, brings you into what? Jesus did not just come to impart knowledge. And the proof of what Jesus came to do was seen in the book of Acts. What the disciples began to do in the, book of, in, in the book of Acts shows that Jesus did not only impart knowledge into them, he brought them into a place where they can apply those things they have learned. Are you getting what I'm saying? Meanwhile, in wisdom, there is what? Direction. Are you there? But in knowledge, there is fact, 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 fact. Are you there? You have facts, you have points. Are you there? Yes, you have facts. Wisdom gives you facts. You know, you know, you know this, you know that. Do you know you can know a man and not understand the man? Do you know it's possible? Okay. How many of you know the president of Nigeria? Everybody, because you have seen his picture, right? Do you understand him? It takes relationship to attain understanding. But I shall understand the man. But you, you know the man. Because of the distance, you can't join me from knowing. You stay here. Until you move close, you won't know. You get what I'm saying? It begins to bring every death into life. It's a life-giving river. 
Oh, let it flow right here. What does relationship does? Many know God, but they don't understand God because there's no relationship. Are you getting what I'm saying? Look at me. Do you know what will make a wife understand a husband more than anybody else is what? Relationship. You, hello, look at me. You know your pastor because maybe he comes every Sunday to preach to you. Are you there? But the wife of the pastor understands the man. The children understand the man. Why? On the strength of what? So meaning that or it is what we bring you into understanding of the move of God is your relationship with God. It's not prayer. Lord, let me understand him. No. There are things that respond to process. And there are things that respond to prayers. Prayers will not jump process. Are you there? Any form of prayer that seems to jump process is a ritual. It's not prayer. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, understanding is attained on the strength of what? Relationship. I get what I'm saying. You don't need relationship, so to say, to acquire knowledge. I get what. Now look at look at this step. If I have knowledge of God, to understand God, I will need to move what closer to Him. So by moving closer to God, I will have what understanding of what of God. Then the God I understand now will now teach me how to apply what I understood. Are you getting what I'm saying? Are you getting what I'm saying? Listen. Application of what you know eh, will be taught. It's not you that will achieve it. It is God that will teach you. And God will teach you on the strength of what? Relationship. Are you getting what I'm saying? Take for instance. Okay, uh, look at, I, I said, I think I said this last week. The case of Joseph. I said when Joseph was young, he must have been taught. Don't, don't live with another person's wife. Don't commit adultery. Don't commit fornication. Are you there? By sitting under that Bible study, he acquired what? Knowledge. But he did not stop there. He also moved closer to God by building what? Relationship with God. In the day when the wife of Potiphar came to seduce him, he was able to what? Apply. Are you there? Now, please note this. You see, application is a product of empowerment. Are you there? Application is what? Is a product of empowerment. You cannot um, you cannot apply what you know until you are empowered. Hmm? Until you are what? So in that day when Joseph was seduced, when he was seduced, the reason he could not fall into that temptation was because the God he had built relationship with empowered him to say no. Are you getting what I'm saying? Do you know the funniest thing about sin is this? You don't beg people not to sin. Ah, please don't enjoy my dish, enjoy my for long, my dish, my. The man will say, okay, 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 okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, 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 okay. <laughs> if the man unknowingly with still sin. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. So sin is not about begging. 
there is something we must know to deal with him. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not a overcoming sin is not a product of self-discipline. Uh, discipline yourself. It's just like somebody is drunk. And I say, ah, don't be a judge, don't be a judge. Don't be a judge. <laughs> I enjoy the bad disgrace of my enjoy. Ah, he will disgrace you. <laughs> I thought they enjoy it. That man is just blessing every month. That man is ever one. Ah, but they try. Ever one, you do it, you say, ah. Overcoming sin is not the product of self discipline, it is the product of empowerment. And the consciousness of your new position in Jesus. Are you there? It's not the product of self discipline. Are you there? Do you know what self-discipline is? Self-discipline. Discipline that can be achieved on the strength of self cannot conquer self. <laughs> the discipline that can be achieved on the strength of self cannot conquer self. Self-discipline is a form of discipline you can achieve through what? Self. And that cannot conquer self. So even if a preacher is not empowered, he will preach powerfully and still go and commit sin. Do you know there are people, there are certain preachers that still drink alcohol? I'm not saying alcoholic wine, no. They taste alcohol. They, that's how they will be high in the spirit. They will just come and say, praise the Lord. <laughs> and they will say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. You will see strange energy coming from them. It's not from the spirit of God. It's alcohol. They will tell you, we are high in the spirit. You see, my eyes is red. Something will happen today. Ah. <laughs> I get what I'm saying. You don't conquer self with self. Are you there? You don't conquer what? Self. Self cannot conquer self. If self can conquer self, Jesus will not come. There's no point for Jesus to come. So which number what are we? Number number three. The spirit of what? Understanding. What's number four? Spirit of Ah. Don't become a counselor if you lack this spirit. <laughs> It's not the paper they give you in school. Now I'm satisfied. Uh, I'm satisfied. Uh, after four years, I'm a counselor. Uh, the spirit of counsel. Are you there? That spirit is what you need to become a what? A counselor. A counselor that will counsel people in the will of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me give you an example of the spirit of counsel. Do you know it, you can have a man that is mighty and yet he lacks the spirit of counsel? Hmm? You see, the spirit of counsel and the spirit of wisdom. They are friends. Are you there? They are related, but they are not the same. Are you there? The spirit of wisdom. The Bible says wisdom is profitable to what? To direct. Look at me. Wisdom will direct you. The spirit of wisdom will give you direction. Go straight. But the spirit of counsel will tell you how to act while you are obeying that instruction. So as you are going straight, you look straight. 
That's the spirit of counsel. The spirit of wisdom will say, go straight. You can be going straight and be say, ah, okay. If it, are, you, are you getting what I'm saying? And you can go straight and not look straight. Are you there? But the spirit of counsel gives you an additional information to the direction you will get from the spirit of wisdom. Are you there? The spirit of wisdom will say what? Go straight. Spirit of counsel will say what? Do what? Look straight. The spirit of counsel will guide you on how to act. Are you there? While you are on the journey. But the spirit of wisdom will tell you to start the journey. Are you getting what I'm saying? Let me give you an example of the... of. There are several places in the Bible where the spirit of counsel was utilized. But let me give you an example. Moses was a powerful man of God. Are you getting what I'm saying? He had wisdom. And by wisdom... He got direction. And the direction he got is, <laughs> was that the people of Israel had several issues. So, let me meet with them one by one so that I can what? Give them advice. Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh. The Lord will have mercy in the name of Jesus. So, Moses, by wisdom, we now call them. Okay, what's your problem? They will tell him. He will, he will give them advice and they will go. But you, they now discover that Moses will sit from morning till evening counseling the people, giving them advice by wisdom. There, meanwhile, there's another man called Jethro who had the spirit of counsel. He now came to Moses and said, if you continue this thing you are doing, you will what? You will die fast. Choose among these people, elders, those that have the fear of God, and appoint them leaders. So instead of everybody coming to you, what should they do? They will go to those people. So it is only the case that are hard that they will bring. That's what? Counsel. Are you getting what I'm saying? Hmm? If, you know, a leader that lacks counsel may not live long. Are you there? A leader that lacks what counsel may not what? May not live long. So, Moses' life was preserved on the strength of the counsel he received from who? Are you getting what I'm saying? Another thing to notice is this. To get counsel, you have to search for it. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have to look. Counsel will not come to you. Are you there? You what? You look for it. Now, looking for it may not necessarily mean that you'll be searching everywhere, moving from one place to another. No. If you honor men that have the spirit of counsel, you will do what? You will get counsel. You can look for something with honor. Are you there? For people like Jethro to come and check on Moses, what has Moses done? He has shown what? Honor. Are you there? So that coming of Jethro is Moses looking for what? Counsel. What's the next one? That's number what? Number six. Just number five. The spirit of what? The spirit of mind. 
It is the spirit of might that makes a mighty man. You cannot be mighty if you don't have might. Are you there? What are you saying? The mighty name of Jesus. What are you saying? You are saying the name of the Jesus that has might. That's what you are saying. What makes you mighty is what? Is might. And that was what Samson what? had. The spirit of might gives you ability. The spirit of might gives you what? Gives you ability. So Samson can look at a, a, a pole, a pillar, and we just uproot it. Samson can kill thousands of people at a time. Why? Because he had, huh? He had might, right? The spirit of what? Of what? But he fell on the lap of Delilah because he lacked. Are you getting what I'm saying? Wisdom gives your might a direction. Might is non directional, it does not have a direction. It does not have direction. It is wisdom that will direct the might that you have. Are you there? So until you add wisdom to your might, you are not secure. The safety in the might that you have is, is the addition of wisdom to it. Are you getting what I'm saying? As the river flow begins to bring every death into life. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's not, a, it's not enough to say I have power. You can abuse the power you have if you lack wisdom. Do you believe me? Okay, let me give you an example. Do you know that might is like a force that can push you to do things? Are you there? But if you have might and you lack wisdom, anytime that force pushes you to do, you will what? You will want to do. You will not be able to restrain yourself. A man of God shared a testimony of how he got his first, I think about 30 million. Maybe he prays for some people and you know now when God wants to bless his servant. And now said, ah, that thing you prayed, God has answered. And now said, send your account. They credited the first maybe 20, maybe $20,000. It was like a dream. They now send another ten thousand dollars. Before you know it, ah, millions, more than twenty million, maybe more than thirty million. He was so happy. He said that time, he will just be going like this. Something will just tell you. How much is this your first one? Seventy thousand. Break it. Buy another one. <laughs> Break it down, down. You don't know your tendency until something touch your hand. You know you are coming to fellowship now. You will see it clearly. You are just in your head. Let something touch your hand. Are you there? You think you are humble. I don't know. The day God will bless you. If you still continue like this, then we know you are humble. That day when uh, they do will drive on the uh, jeep and just pass somewhere. So they say they do sit and they say, no, I don't sit on benches. Ah! <laughs> I don't sit on benches. What? Well, you have been sitting. He said, no, no, I, no, you know, all things have passed away. I don't sit on it. He said, okay. Ah. <laughs> Praise God. Number six. 
Because I want us to ask questions. So let's let's be fast. Number six is what? The spirit of knowledge. Please ask the closest person to you. Is this you? Ask now. Don't be scared. Don't ask this small sister. Ask this big aunt. She's scared. Ask your partner. Is this you? Is this your real self? Ask very well. Call Is this your real self? Hello? The day before we just touch one crippled man, three of them on wheelchair. Say, stand, stand, stand. And they'll stand. Hey, they go, they go. We just see Brofo and Entry Fellowship, that is. <laughs> <laughs> Brofo, Brofo. Brofo, where else are you? He will not answer. <laughs> and by the time he lifts, he will lift up his head in the next one hour. I said, <laughs> I said, <laughs> if you know who I am. <laughs> you know. Sister will say, ah, where does our brother I said, no, you don't greet a man of God like that. Your name was so different. That's my covenant with God. <laughs> a lot of nonsense is happening in the body of Christ. It's not like that. I'm just giving examples. There's a man of God that is led, does not touch the ground. If you want to preach, somebody will stay like this. You know? So Jesus! <laughs> and when he's going, somebody will carry this thing and carry this thing. <laughs> what, what is in this life that we have? There are many Christians that have foolishness hidden in them. It's the day God will bless them that they will begin to exhibit the character. I'm telling you the truth. That's when you will know that fasting is hard. Some of you can fast now because of the way things are. Fortnightly before food comes, it's already fasting. So you will now become spiritual. So I'm fasting. No. The day. <laughs> hey. <laughs> The day you will have people that are doing all those things for you and you have a bag of rice, bag, everything is there. Is the day we will know. That's why you, you now see. Glory will say, well, God is not hard. We are the one taking things hard. <laughs> see, we don't find one doctrine that is not existing. Jesus fasted so that we will not fast. He has fasted on our behalf. Hey, some of you say, mmm. It's not Remao. It's death. Death. <laughs> Ask your friend again. Is this the real you? I remember the day I got phone for the first time. It was this button phone, this touchlight phone. I felt like I'm in heaven. There's nobody I cannot challenge that day. Me? <laughs> Especially when I now touch the phone and I'm playing this snake game. Kai! My heart is... That day was the day I felt fulfilled in my... I, my, I just felt like I'm fulfilled. There's no height I cannot achieve. I'm, I'm, I'm on top of the world. Ask your partner again. Is this you? You are praying that God should take you to the world now. Is there you will do your... I remember when, we, when I had one ministration in... Um, what I thought. You know, I told you everything that happened. The venue, it was a copper in NCCF fellowship. The venue is not far, it's where we can trek. They will hold that one Uber to come and pick me. This is Gomorrah. I want to enter the car, they open the door. I said, ah. I'm not. Okay. <laughs> but I was just completing my brain. What's happening? And the food they will bring. 
you will need to be committed to fasting for you to fast. I'm not joking. When I was coming, they were, they were already asking, what do you want to eat? I said, I'm not eating. Just, I wait in the night. So when I came, in the night, they brought a pack of jollof fries with almost half chicken. They brought a big bottle of juice, a big sliced bread. They brought like, um, they brought oranges. They brought one fritter. They brought warm water in. They brought fruits in pack. <laughs> when they left, I was not asked. I said, "Now, in my mind, I said, ah, I was supposed to come here with Daddy. <laughs> That's what I was thinking. I said, if Daddy is here, I cannot suffer. <laughs> the boy we do." <laughs> It was so much that I had to bring those things when I was coming. Because you can't expect me to eat all those things. And the second day when they brought the food, they did, it is in that order. That order of grace. Yeah. Second day they brought semo <laughs> and spiritual fish. Hi. <laughs> Many of you think you used to eat. When you see good food, you will not eat much. The reason you eat much is because you don't even know what you have. <laughs> you are like, oh, <laughs> let's worry. Ah, that's yeah. oh. <laughs> When you see food, you will not eat food. When the meat on your food is enough to fill your stomach, you just discover the spoon for rice you take is five and you are food. May the Lord bring us to that level. Amen. Ask your partner again, maybe for the last time. Don't look at the face of say, who are you? <laughs> Praise the Lord. Anything God has not prepared you for, He will not bring you into. When I stepped into the lodge, I don't watch TV. I don't watch TV. I can't remember the last time my hand pressed on. I didn't watch it. The TV was on. I said, this is death. I quickly put it on. I put it on fast. I can't get to that place and start watching news. Okay, ah, no. And I heard the voice of God. He said, The time is near. This invitation is just TP. It's a spiritual TP. Let's check what we have taught you. Let's see how you look. That's what the Lord told you. This is it. It's TP. We are, we are watching you. We are what? Beloved of God, your real you is what you demonstrate after God has blessed you. Are you there? There's a way. You know, not having enough will make you humble. There's a way it does. You will think you are humble. It's not really that you are humble. It's just the way, t- it's just because things are not sufficient. So, insufficiency can produce something that looks like humility. But the true test of a man is what he can do when God has blessed him. So, when you see men like that, that boy you're going on his knees to preach, you will know that God has done something to him. The first time I went to redemption camp, and I remember Baba, and now my heart, and now began to repent. Redeem is not Campo. When they say redemption city, they are not trying to, eh? It's a city. For your information, most of the church in the camp, they are like a mansion. They are like cathedrals. I'm telling you. They are gigantic churches. They, they are on a new redemption camp now. They are working on it. The old redemption camp, if somebody says, walk around the old redemption camp seven times, what the person is saying is, die. <laughs> are you guessing? It's, a, it's another way of saying, go and die. <laughs> if you don't know the ledge, you say, okay, okay, okay. No, they have just sentenced you to death. Death by walking. <laughs> You know there is death by hungry. There's also death by... Walk 
around the camp seven times. It's the same thing as go and die. I did prayer work around three times. And on the second leg, on the second round, my leg was, became heavy. It, you can't walk around in, in 10 minutes. That's just forget it. By the time I finished walking around the third time, he let him up. That Daniel. And I started from dark. Men that God gave that to, and they are still humble, following God. You will know God has worked on their hands. You have seen things in God. God will give it to you. He wants to give you nation. He will give you. But he needs to work on your heart. Somebody mistakenly sent 1,000 to your account. You did not greet your mommy in the morning. <laughs> How many of you discovered that when one small money enters your... There's a way you feel. Have you discovered? Ah, they will not confess. <laughs> Do I have a witness in the house? There's a way you feel. You just feel like... I'm not, I'm not ordinary, I'm not ordinary. I'm not. If things can still make you feel somehow, it's a sign that God still needs to work on you. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are not ready. You are not ready. I'm telling you, you are not ready. You are, you are a young minister. God is just helping you. Very young. An old woman came to me before you. He said, daughter. Ah, daughter. Even angels are ashamed of you. <laughs> daughter. An old woman came to me. Well, um, this is where, this is where. That you was there. A woman gave me one gift one day. I did not the gift I collected the boy. I, I gave it out. Because I saw the gift as an oblation. You know what oblation is? Hmm? There's a place in the Bible where some of the soldiers of David went through the wall to get him water. Huh? And when they brought the water to David, David said, This water is not water, this is blood. The sacrifice is too much. That I won't do this one before it's I collected the gift, but I did not use it. I gave it to another man of God. They gave you 5,000 naira cash in your hand. And suddenly you were empowered. You became a new man. It's a sign that you are not ready. Are you getting what I'm saying? It's a sign that what? If you are not careful, when God opens the door to you, do you know the honor I got in that portal court? If God has not worked on me, when I come back for fellowship on Sunday, I will find portal. I don't, is this how to greet me, baby? I think I will, I will just do. Do you discover that when you go outside, the honor is more than when you come in? Because the people in are familiar with you. But those people do not know. So they, you are like a God. Ah. So you, if you are not wise, you can come back and start fighting your people. You don't come back. The, the, the title for the next fellowship will now be Honor. honor. <laughs> or Honor the Prophet. <laughs> then you start with. <laughs> if you honor the Prophet, you get the Prophet reward. <laughs> yeah. Especially those that have sweet mouths, you see. Many die young because they don't know how to honor. <laughs> Someone say, Mm, mm, yes, sir. Uh. <laughs> there's a way you attack, there's a way you act to your man of God. After God is the man of God. Like, mm. Mm, mm. You are on a journey into death. Death. <laughs> Are you getting what I'm saying? Into death. Some ministers that were still following God in spirit and in truth, they were corrupted the day they went out of the country. Meanwhile, this my message has ended. Let me press this one. I'm done with this. Maybe later I will complete it. I need to press this. God is not, is not restricted. He can take you to that place you are dreaming of. 
Maybe the reason is not taking you there now is because you are not prepared. Are you a singer and you want God to take you out? You want to bless you? He needs to work on your heart. Hi! When you have 5 million followers, how will you act? Will you still be like this? Will your shoulder not be up? God is not a ritualist. Anything he has not thoroughly prepared you for, he won't give to you. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you travel outside the country and you see sisters, send somebody tell your neighbor, Nigeria is Nigeria. Other countries, other countries. People are people. Ah, sorry, people are not the same. There are some countries you travel to and you will see sisters. They are, their skin will be like leather. It will be shining with the sun. If you don't, if you are not looking to the mirror at home, you can just check their skin and check your face. If God has not helped you, his sisters like that will come to you and say, Daddy, anything, sir, anything. <laughs> you say, anything? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> your weakness will be exposed. If God takes you to the scene, if he has not worked for you. Now that you are still in Abdullah, in the place of dealing now, any mistake you make, nobody will see you. When you go to the sea, your mistake becomes a thing. Are you guys what I'm saying? When you go to the sea, your mistake becomes what? A thing. It becomes a movie that people can watch. So maybe the reason God is not taking you to that place you are praying for now is because you are not ready. Are you getting what I'm saying? Can you speak to the Lord and say, Lord, prepare me. Prepare me, prepare me. Prepare me, prepare me. In the name of Jesus. Prepare me, O oh God. Prepare me, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare me, O oh God. Prepare me, O oh God. Prepare me, prepare me. Prepare my heart, Lord. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare my heart, O oh God. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In the name of Jesus. Prepare my heart, O oh God. In Jesus' name we are prayed. The sign to show that your day of emancipation, is it your day of emergence is close, is that God will begin to consecrate you for great things. See, there is a there is a consecration for greatness. Are you there? There's a consecration for fame. Are you there? If you are not consecrated, you will be defeated. Because you won't know how to keep that atmosphere. Are you getting what I'm saying? Oh, let me share one example of myself with you. I don't think I can forget this thing. Even if I've forgotten it, even if I've forgotten it, it will still keep coming. Many years ago, I was dancing in a chair. I danced! And after the service, somebody came to me and said, well, You know how to dance. What am I supposed to do? Well, we'll bless God, right? You know how to dance. <laughs> well, I, 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 I've not danced. That one, I've just said. Uh, <laughs> this time I remember my response. <laughs> I feel so bad. I said, ah, see John the Mojo, me see Joe, ah, no, no, yeah. Now means watch out. I, I, I don't see my part too. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Before God gives you big things, He will first give you small things. He will test your reactions with those small things. Are you getting what? 
Yes. That's why you cannot write 20 books at a time. You start with one. Are you there? And God will watch your reaction on that one. Maybe you will think you have arrived. Are you there? If you cannot undo little things, you won't undo big things. Forget about it. Are you there? If you fail in something little, you cannot succeed in something that is not. Are you getting what I'm saying? Can we rest up? I want you to pray from your heart, pray with faith. Our time is almost up now. And say, Jesus, prepare me for the assignment ahead of me. In the name of Jesus, prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. In the name of Jesus, prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. Prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. I want us to pray. Prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. In the name of Jesus, prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. In the name of Jesus. Prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. In the name of Jesus, prepare me, O God, for the assignment ahead of me. In Jesus' name we are praying. Beloved of God, I speak to you in spirit and in truth. One of the greatest things the Lord is doing with me that I really appreciate is this. I don't see my achievement. I'm telling you the truth. I don't see it. If you are the type that you are always seeing your achievement, you will have issues. Because a time will come, they will move you to act. Are you getting what I'm saying? But if you are always seeing your achievement, it will be hard for you to humble yourself. That's why when you come and when you see me, you know, among my students, we act as friends. There's no boss, there's no, we are just acting as friends. I don't see the achievement. I don't see it. So it is easy for me to humble myself. Ask the Lord. Lord, give me the consecration for greatness. Give me what? Give me the consecration for greatness. In the name of Jesus. Give me the consecration for greatness. In the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we are praying. So when they ask what's your name now, you can't even mention your name again without telling them you are the choir director. Is that part of your name? You can't. So you see, uh, you see, Tolu, BSC, MSC, PhD, JP, Evangelist, Stroke Prophet. Ah, only you. Vanity. How do I call it? Until your eyes is taken away from things, you cannot be spiritual. Your ways will not please God if you are focused on things, on vanity. This is the last prayer point. Say, Father, help me not to focus on vanity. I will not live a life of vanity. In the name of Jesus. Can you begin to pray? Lord, help me not to focus on vanity. In the name of Jesus. Help me, Lord. Help me, Lord. Rada balente de bele balaba. Eros kababa. Embrete lebe rende de bele tusha. Errata barrede de bere de gebeleno. Embrote bere de bento brada balaba. Ishete kete kete bere gedeba. Embrete ke bere de de beleno. Irada da barada barada ba. In Jesus' name we are praying. Let me have somebody here. Some of you, when you post things online, you are always checking. You want to see the likes. You want to see views. And when the view is low, it attacks your heart. 
you have an issue. <laughs> settle the issue before you go. Settle it. Settle the issue. Ah! 12 viewers. What the? Ah! Lata Aro. This is to two. 12 viewers. There's a series God wants you to teach to bless your generation. But the first time you post it, two likes. Two likes? Ni <laughs> marka for two weeks. Ah, yeah. What you talk about? See, they don't, you will not put one. See, if the devil wants to destroy your life, he will give you a wrong belief system. You will not bring out one demonic coat. When you go to a place and you are not celebrated, leave the place. <laughs> That's the coat that will now guide you. I know some of you are like that too. You post, you want to go and check your views. And the, the views, when it's low, is affecting your heart. You cannot even preach when, when, when the people are just few. When, when it is only two that came for fellowship, that day the Spirit of God will not move. Because you are sober in your spirit. Ah, Elomedi. <laughs> This is something you're supposed to be kind for. Because it's happening to us. And your are Ah! You must prepare a message. This is spirit of God. Tell me also about you. You just come up and say, I want. Oh, my God. And God, I I went for one program one day. I won't measure this. I won't measure this. I won't measure this. Me and my brother are ready. It's not that you. It's Pastor Lee. As we were entering, like, somebody invited us. As we were entering, we, I mean, why is this very far? But they were living by. They did not look at the congregation. Meanwhile, I'm going to call for love. I want to go to the airport. What for this country? I want to call love. When we entered, I wanted not to minister. You know the way to do a minister now? They didn't. <laughs> they did. He did not know when the thing came out. He said, I hear me. Oh, that drive was the If views we affect the spiritual flow, you have an issue. If your population we affect the move of the spirit, you have issue. Can you just pray personal prayer? In the next two minutes, we are going. The, our time is up. Just pray personal prayer. Whatever is your body, anything you want to tell God to help you, just say, Lord, I have a... Confess to God and say, Lord, I have an issue. I is a serious issue. Mention your issue now and, and tell him to help you. There is grace available for you. I say, Lord, if this thing continues, I will be in trouble. Help me. I need an urgent help. My life needs an urgent help. No, you have to help me. You have to help me. You have no, you have to help me. 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 No. You have to help me, Jesus. The spirit of the Lord, the spirit of wisdom, the spirit of understanding, yeah? the spirit of counsel, the spirit of might, the spirit of knowledge, the spirit of the fear of God. Now, what's number one? So, last week, what did I say? That has to do with lordship, right? Now, all these seven, they are spirits, meaning that they can possess a person. Are you there? So that means when you see... Okay. What's number two? 
The spirit of wisdom. What did I say? On wisdom. So we know now that wisdom is a spirit. Am I right? Okay, let's just go to where I am. I'm in the spirit of might, right? The spirit of, I want to go to knowledge. Am I right? Now, praise the Lord. I told you that knowledge is the starting point of understanding. Are you there? So you cannot claim to have understanding of what you don't have knowledge of. Are you there? So that means if you start from understanding, what's the next junction you are, you, you are heading to? Sorry, if you start from knowledge, what's the next point you are heading to? Understanding. Right? Is that what I said? And from understanding, you what? Because wisdom deals with application. Are you there? Application. Because I can be I can be saying something now. You can hear me, but you don't understand what I'm saying. Are you getting what I'm saying? You have knowledge of that thing. Oh, this is the kind of language. Yes, uh, he's speaking Spanish. You have the knowledge of the language I'm speaking, but you don't have the understanding of it. So, knowledge is in knowing. Knowing. Are you there? There's a gift of word of knowledge. Are you there? You know something that happened when you are not there. That's. Are you there? Just speaking by the Spirit of God. That's word of knowledge. Now, knowledge is the foundation for what? Huh? For understanding. And I told you last week, I said, Understanding is a product of continuous learning. Another point I gave you last week is understanding brings a standard to your standing. That's why they call it understanding. I'm standing for the Lord. You can be standing without a standard. If you are standing without a standard, anything can make you fall. Anything. 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 I get what I'm saying. If you are standing without a standard, what? What's the implication? Anything can make you fall. So understanding brings a what? A standard to your standing. Number, the last one, seven, right? The spirit of what? How many of you have seen people that have the fear of God before? Okay. Now, when you see a man or a woman that has the fear of God, just know that a spirit is what? Is at work in that person. Are you there? So the fear of God is a spirit. It, and it's one of the seven spirits of God. You know, I told you last week, I said, the seven spirit of God can also be called the seven DNAs of God. The seven genes of God. And when you are born by a father, you are expected to carry the word, the DNA of the father. So every child of God have access to the DNA of God. Have access to the spirits of God. So one of the signs to show that you are truly a child of God is the fear of God. Are you there? You cannot claim that you know God when you don't fear Him. Are you there? Hey, see, let me tell you something. You see, the proof of our sonship Huh? It's not primarily manifestation. Huh? Those songs we what? We manifest. But it's not primarily manifestation. It's primarily the fear of God. Because it is the fear of God that we guide you to say no to sin. You can be healing people and still be in sin. So, the, what authenticates our sonship, our adoption in Christ, is not primarily manifestations. It is the fear of God. And that's the foundation for purity. That's the foundation for what? For purity. You must understand this so that you will not be carried away by manifestation. Do you know there are some people that are fasting now? As a matter of fact, they have gone beyond 20 days. Lord. 
Give me power to what? To heal the sick. Give me power to heal the sick. If they get it, they will abuse it. Are you there? Because they are seeking for secondary. And they have left what? The primary. The vacuum will be there. The what? The vacuum. Let me ask you a question. Let me ask you a question. How many of you had this experience? Have you seen? Have you seen? Okay, maybe you have had the experience. Let me just ask. Have you have you had this experience before? You saw a man of God that God is using. As a matter of fact, you were you were actually admiring the grace on the man. Are you there? But somehow, when you move closer, you saw some things he was doing, you were disappointed. Have you seen something like that? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. One, two. Raise your hand. The man is not, the person is not here. So you, you are saved. You are saved. Okay, Sister Stella. Two, three, four, five. You know why? The man has left primary. He traveled into second. The vacuum will be there. Thank God for the move of prayer. Youth are praying now. Have you discovered that? They will do 12 hours. It's good. I just hope you are not jumping the primary to secondary. Because secondary is sweet. Am I right? Secondary is sweet. I just enter the business and say, uh, uh, well, the fire was on for, the fire was on for. Okay. And then there's at the back. Okay, that is there. Yeah, touch that. I just say, ah, ah. Uh, well, um, touch that one idea. Secondary is sweet. <laughs> Start from primary. <laughs> eh? Start from primary. I shared the story of one, one man of God, the Geo. He's married with kids and he's still having an affair with the choir director. Who was a female. So one day he snapped his private part and that's how they have been doing on, <laughs> on WhatsApp. So he would just snap Victor and just saying to the people, today the Lord we <laughs> have this way. So those kind of nonsense person. Meanwhile, they also have church group on what? Yeah. <laughs> but this very day, the, I'm not cracking jokes. I'm teaching you reality. What happened live? The lady too. The God. Meanwhile, when they come to church, people will see. <laughs> okay. Things are happening in this life. Things. Amen. Things. When you get to the secondary, listen to me. When you get to the secondary, people will be vulnerable to you by the virtue of what they are seeing God do through you. They will be vulnerable. They can give you anything. Even when they know it is wrong, they will still submit to you because of what they are saying. Take for instance, somebody came with a dead mother. And I lay my hands on the mother in the name of Jesus, come back to her. And the mother sneezes. Anything I tell the girl, she will do. <laughs> you don't believe me? Anything I tell the girl, she will do. That's the danger of secondary, which most of us want to go to. Most of the youth now, they want to go to secondary and leave primary. Which is what? What's the primary? The spirit. Of the fear, I know you are craving for the spirit of prophecy. Find the spirit of the fear of God first. The spirit of healing. Find the spirit of the, of the fear of God first. So the the geo now snapped. Bah! And send it. Send it. Today is the day that the Lord has made. <laughs> Meanwhile, before they meet, they will first they will first do publicity of the meeting. He now sent the picture to the church WhatsApp group. <laughs> hey, man. Hey! You know some of those dicking used to? Oh, they just do their grass at us. Shade, why would I walk you? Glass of you, damn it, could I walk? Why would I Shade. Ah. Daddy Ray, uh, Daddy. <laughs> hey! The 
the man, the, the summary of the story is the man committed suicide. That was the best option the devil gave to him. Don't go to secondary. Leaving the primary, you will not last. When you see a man that God is using from his young age and he grew into it till old age, working with God perfectly, such men pass through primary. That's why most of these people that are jumping now may not last. Because they have skipped primary. And the vacuum will be there. You know, in our education system, a, a parent can lift the child from primary four to J1 and the child will still cope. The child will even do jam and score three or something. The vacuum will not be seen, right? But it doesn't happen like that in the spirit. Every step you skip, the vacuum. The vacuum. The vacuum. The vacuum. If you skip the school of process, the vacuum will be there. Because every knowledge you have will be tested. Will be tested. If you skip the school of process, where God wants to teach you how to deal with sexual immorality, you now skip that class in your spirit. You jump to the class of prophecy. It's okay. The day you will travel to UK for a prophetic meeting, I can assure you if you are a male. Amen. <laughs> you, you understand what I want to say? The spirit of what? The fear of who? Of God. Ecclesiastes says, this is the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear. Fear what? So, turn to the closest person to you and ask this simple question. Do you fear the law? The fear of God is not shaking in his presence. It's not your ability to shake. (laughs) <laughs> no. The fear of God is reference. You see, it is obedience. It's obedience. In the realm of the spirit, fear is defined by obedience. If you fear me, you will what? Obey. The fear of God is defined by the love of God. How much is your love for God? If you don't love God, it's a proof that you don't fear Him. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay. Maybe I should just wrap it up here so that we'll be able to do what we want to do. Do we have any questions? You see, I want us to know that the agenda of God in the end time is not to scrap fake prophets. The agenda of God in this end time is to separate the sheep from the fox. God will cause a clear distinction between the true and the false. That's what God wants to do. So if somebody comes to you and say, fake prophet, fake prophet will be no more. It's a lie. It's a lie. But what God wants to do in this season is to separate, to bring a clear what distinction. You know, now they look like the real ones. But God is on a mission to separate the fake from the original. And it's all about the Bible. The Bible will say things like two will be going, and what? One. That's a sign. That's a separation. The agenda of God is not marry. Marry in this sense means it's not come together. No. It is what? Separate. Are you getting what I'm saying? Now, going into mommy's question. Why has, what? Why has the Holy Ghost allowed people to prophesy falsely in this name? The first thing is this. If it is, the first question to ask is, is it, what is the source? Are you there? Because you can give prophecy from a strange spirit. Are you there? You see, that what somebody is saying is true does not mean it is coming from the spirit of truth. Are you there? 
Because a spirit that is not the spirit of truth can also say something that is true. Are you there? Paul was on a mission and a girl with the spirit of divination said, These are the men of God. What she said was right, but it was coming from a strange spirit. Are you getting what I'm saying? So, the first thing to check is the source. Now, if the source is now God, let's now assume that it is actually God because the person does not have anything dark. It's just prayers. Are you getting it? It will mean that that was not how the person started. See, you can start with God in purity and end with impurity if your channel is corrupt. Are you guys not? See, some of these people that are folk, that, that are false now, who are fake prophets now, they, that's, that was not how they started. Are you there? It was on the long run that what? That what? That what? That they got corrupted. Do you understand what I'm saying now? That was not how they started. But at the long run, because of pressure, they want to acquire this, they want to... Now, let me give you an example. Listen, when God is speaking through you, one of the things God does is that He also gives you an avenue to contribute to it. Are you there? But you must understand that when God wants to speak through you, you don't add anything if He's not asking you to add. Let me give an example. For instance, you are in a program. God can speak to me and say, 20 people here, there are 20 people here, God, I want to tell you what is happening, real life. How some prophets with the name of man of God are corrupting the move of God. They are adding to what God is saying. God can speak to them and say, okay, there are 20 people here, before, by this time tomorrow, before you come for this program tomorrow, maybe it's a three-day program. God can speak to them and say, there are 20 people here. Before they come for this program tomorrow, I will open a door for them. They will receive a good news. That was what God said. Are you there? So, the man of God now want to relate it. He will now say, there are 20 people here. Before you come for the program tomorrow, God wants to give you a good news. What has he done? He has said the same thing God told him. Right? See, let me ask you, what is prophecy? Maybe you don't know. Prophecy is not speaking as you wish. It's saying the same thing you heard God say. That's prophecy. Otherwise, you talk, it will not happen. Prophecy is a repetition of what you heard God saying. Prophecy is simply saying what God has said. That's prophecy. But sometimes you can speak by faith. Are you there? Those are faith statements. Like, it will not happen. Those coming speaking by faith but when you are saying and prophesying what that should mean is that you are saying what you have heard God say so the man of God will now say there are 20 people here before you come for tomorrow's program the Lord is going to open a, a door for you you receive a good news that was where God stopped God put full stop Abby. he will now continue but for that to happen run out here with 20,000 naira. you are 20 run out with 20,000 <laughs> addition are, are you not seeing it are you not saying it? But those people will go home and the thing will happen. They will not know that the source was corrupt. So that's why the Bible says, Woe mongers are not the literal. God will judge. So a man of God can be corrupt on the pulpit and you will not know. Because you, what you will be using to judge is that what he's saying is happening. It's more than that. It's about, is he saying the exact thing God said or is adding to it? Meanwhile, God did not have 20,000 naira, but he had it because he needed money. And the thing happened, so people will not talk. They won't complain. They will think it is God. Are you getting what I'm saying? Yes, I understand. Yeah. Do you have any other questions? Okay. Can we bow our heads and just say something to them? So, Father, we bless you. Thank you for this great opportunity. We adore you. Let your name be exalted in the name of Jesus. To you.